Hello, algebra students. Fair warning, this particular example that we're going to look at, it's a simple interest problem, which is one of the formulas from the GED formula sheet. But it's actually maybe a little bit above the level of the GED itself. So if you're struggling with it and your only goal is to pass your GED test, you could probably turn off this video and it wouldn't harm you that much. But that being said, I want to tackle it with you for a few reasons. One, it's just really good practice of what we've been doing. And it's going to require a lot of calculator skills and some math reasoning, which are skills we need for the GED test, right? Calculator reasoning, so important. But then also, I really like it because it prepares you for college. Because if you are a non-math major, like you don't have to take the algebra-based mathematics and you just take the like real world practical math for non-math majors and you get interest problems a lot. So this is good preparation for that. So all that to say, let's get started. A money management firm promises that an investment with their firm will earn five and a quarter percent annually. How long will it take for an investment of 25000 to earn $4,600 in simple interest? So simple interest is kind of a stepping stone in the world of interest uh, because most banks and things don't actually pay simple interest. Uh, but we'll start with this concept like in your college classes before you get on to more complicated kinds of interests. So simple interest is just straight up for however long you have it, you get paid a lump interest sum for that amount of time that the interest isn't getting added and changing your account balance throughout. It doesn't get added until the end. That's all we mean. But that being said, you don't really need to understand that much about interest if you have the GED formula sheet. So let's go take a look at the simple interest formula. Lovely. So here is that formula sheet. And the first half or so of the formula sheet is all geometry formulas. So we're looking at different ways to measure shapes. But then after that, we have some other formulas that you shouldn't neglect. Okay. So down at almost the very bottom under the algebra concept, we do have that simple interest formula, which says I is equal to PRT. And for once, we don't have to know what the letters mean. We don't need to mark up our formula sheet because they tell us there. I stands for the interest. That's the dollars you earn. P stands for the principal. The principal is how much you invest. R stands for the rate. That's the interest rate. It's usually a percent, uh, given as a percent anyway. And then T stands for the time in years in general, because most accounts get annual interest, meaning it's a year-based account um, based on how many years you have your money in the account. All right, we got that. Now let's use it. So in general, when we use a formula, especially with the word problem, it's important to go looking through and see what numbers we have. Let's not just randomly assume we have things on the right and plug them all in in the right, okay? So a money management firm promises that an investment with their firm will earn five and one quarter percent annually. See that percent, that's a percentage rate. That is the interest rate. That is the R. How long, how long? They're asking us about length of time there. They're asking us to find T. T is the thing we don't know. Will it take for an investment of 25000 We invested 25000 That's how much we started with. That's called the principal. Uh, principal or principal? I don't know. Don't correct me if I can't spell you guys. That's why I do algebra. <laughs> $4,600 in interest. Okay, the dollar amount of the interest is the I. Okay, the percent is the R, but the dollar amount is the I. So this is the interest. Cool. Now that I've kind of interpreted my numbers and what they mean, now I'm going to go ahead and plug them into the formula. So we said the interest, the dollar amount we earn is 4,600, and that's going to be equal to the principal. We know how much we originally invested, 25,000 times when P, R, and T are shoved together, they're multiplying. R is the rate. Now, careful. A lot of students make a big mistake there. Let me pull out red. A lot of students just go, oh, it's five and one quarter percent. Let me put it right there, five and one quarter percent. You might think you just wrote five and one quarter percent, but you did not. <laughs> you just wrote five and one quarter times as if the bank is going to give you five times your investment. You 
wish. That's not how it works, right? They give you a piece or a part. So five and one quarter percent, that percent sign, that is math. The percent sign itself is math to do. You cannot just drop it without consequences. You have to understand what it means. Now, that being said, this isn't a percent unit. Like I don't even do percents till unit four. So if you're an advanced student, you're probably only doing one unit with me. You don't need to hit up unit four. So it is nice to know that if you don't know how to handle dropping a percent sign, which is basically a conversion, converting it to another form of a number, a decimal or a fraction, if you don't know how to drop a percent sign, you can just put it in your calculator. Okie dokie. And by the way, it's not hard to drop a percent sign. It's basically just dividing by 100. That's what per cent means divide by 100 out of 100. But that being said, we're just going to do it with our calculator right now because that's not our focus right now. Our focus right now is utilizing formulas. So this is not just five and one quarter. It's five and one quarter percent. Just leave that percent sign there. Okay. Now there's other ways to do it. You can convert it by hand. You can convert it in your calculator, but I'm just going to leave the percent sign there. Okay. And then what's the last letter? So I got my I, my P, my R, last letter is T. Well, that's the thing they told me to find, right? Time. They asked me how long. And so T is my unknown. Nice job. Now we have this T. It's not alone on its side of the equal sign. So we do need to solve. We need to solve for T. But before we do, I see some simplifying we can do. So I'll pick up a different color again so we can see it. But there are three numbers multiplying here. 25,000, five and one quarter percent, not five and one quarter by itself, but five and one quarter percent and T are three numbers multiplying, okay? And we can multiply in any order we want. And so I'm gonna take advantage of that to simplify this equation by doing a part of the math. I'm gonna do this piece. I'm gonna simplify by doing 25,000 times five and one quarter percent. And we are gonna do this in our TI. So go get your TI. If you don't have it, pause me, you guys go get it because that's the main part of what we're doing in this one, okay? Um, because even if you don't have necessarily this kind of tricky stuff in a simple interest problem, I do want you to know how to use your calculator for percents because that comes up on math, science, and social studies. There's nothing like preparing for three tests at once. And on all three of those, guess what you get? This calculator. And it does percents. Here we go. 25,000. And we're going to take five and one quarter percent of that by multiplying. Um, you know, I think I'll use parentheses, actually, because I'm not actually sure how the TI treats it when you have the percent button. So let's go ahead and put it in parentheses like we would have done. Now, I want five and one quarter. That's a mixed number. It's part whole number and part fraction. You can see up towards the top, this U N over D in green. That's how you input mixed numbers. And so since it's in green, I'm going to hit the second button. And then I can hit U N over D. And you see my little three boxes blinking. If yours doesn't look just like that, you probably are in the wrong mode. So I want to see those three boxes blinking with that nice horizontal flat fraction bar. Okay? And now I can type five arrow over to type one, and then again, quarter, and then arrow out of the fraction. So I'm no longer in the fraction. And then once again, do not forget your percent or you're not doing what you think you're doing. Without a percent, you're giving yourself five and a quarter times $25,000. You wish that's how banks worked, okay? So we need that percent sign. Now, careful, because there's two percents down here. There's the one where the percent symbol's all by itself, and there's the one where it's with the arrow. The one where it's with the arrow is to convert a regular number into a percent. That's not what you want. We don't have a regular number we want to turn into a percent. We have a number that's already a percent. So we just want the regular plain old percent button. Okay, but once again, it's in green. So I need to hit my green key. Every time you want a green function, you got to hit the second button. And then I can hit percent. And I'll close my parentheses and press enter. Okay, and so I just simplified this portion. Five and one quarter percent of 25,000 is 1,312.50. So 1,312.50 is that portion of it. And now I need to keep everything I haven't used yet. 
So my equal sign stays steady, my 4,600 on the left-hand side, and my T on the right-hand side, looking good. And now it's way easier to solve because I can just see the T is being multiplied by this number. Ooh, did I add a zero to it? <laughs> it doesn't actually matter, but I don't want to confuse you guys. Let's just erase my zero. That was me thinking about money and knowing that that meant 50 cents. My brain just went straight to it. There you go. Is that less confusing? Anyway, that being said, I still don't have my T alone. I still have this long, ugly, ugly number pressed against T multiplying. And my goal is to solve for T. To solve for T, I need to know what he's equal to. So I need to get him alone on his side of the equal sign. I will do the opposite and divide away that long, ugly number. Now I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So let me hop across the equal sign and divide by the same number on that side. And now multiplying and dividing by that same big ugly number are opposites. It cancels, T's alone. And there on the other side is the math to do. Important that you go in the same order, right? Order matters in division. So 4,600 divided by, and I'm just going to arrow up to that ugly number because I don't feel like doing it and then press enter and I get 3.5 yada yada yada. Now I made this one multiple choice for a reason and that's because I want you guys to think about one more tricky thing in this example. I put a lot of tricks in it and that is conversions. In this particular one I have this t with a decimal. Do you see it? Think about what that means. That means that this T is totally in years. I'm saying that I have 3.5 years. And a lot of students just don't really think about what 3.5 years means. They see the three, they see the five, and they go, hey. And that's yet another way that I can fool students who have a mostly good understanding of math. And they walk away from that GED going, oh, I did so well. I'm so proud of myself. And yet they don't score what they wanted to score. It's usually because of things like this, just false assumptions. What does 3.5 mean? It means three and 0.5 of a year, 0.5 of a year. Well, five, that's halfway through our digits. So I'm talking about three and a half years. <laughs> At three years, five months. So that's not three and a half years because our months and our year system are not based on powers of 10 like our decimals are. It doesn't just straight up convert, right? Our decimal number system is based on tens, right? We have 10 digits, but there's not 10 months in a year. There's 12. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Right? We can just do it with common sense, right? 0.5 is a half and half a year is not five months, but half a year is six months. And so we could just use that kind of common sense. That's the style it usually is on the test. And that would be nice. But what if you're feeling like, Kate, um, this is a hard test and I'm thinking a lot and that was not common sense to me. What could I do? Well, you could take this decimal portion, 0 0.504. And I'm saying that's of a year, of a year. So you could multiply, that was of, remember we said of can be thought of as scaling, we can multiply that by those 12 months in a year. And look what we get, 0 0.504, yada, 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 times 12, six months. All right, so two ways to think about that, either way are totally legit, but just saying 3.5 is the same as three years, five months, I'd be fooling you. All right, you guys, tricky, tricky, tricky. Proud of you for sticking with me. Happy learning.